What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. As you know, I've been participating in a 2017 North American International Championship retro format tournament hosted by Pokestats. I've been playing Drampa GX Zork, my same list that I finished in the top eight of that 2017 National Championship with. In round three of the tournament, I play against Samuel Gay with his Alolan Ninetales GX Decidueye GX deck. The deck that Sam plays in round three was a popular choice in 2017. It focuses on using Alolan Ninetales GX with its Ice Blade attack, which can be activated for just a double colorless energy, deals 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, allowing you to snipe bench threats before they are able to evolve up. It pairs very well with Decidueye GX's Feather Arrow ability. Alolan Ninetales GX also has its Ice Path GX attack, which allows you to move all damage counters from this Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon. It doesn't swap damage counters. You don't take any of the damage counters from your opponent's active. You just move them all from the Alolan Ninetales GX to the defending Pokemon, which can be very powerful in combination with Decidueye GX's Feather Arrow. Also, Alolan Ninetales GX has 210 hit points, making it a pretty difficult target to knock out. Now, this deck does not play any way to activate Blizzard Edge, but between Ice Blade and Ice Path GX, Alolan Ninetales GX is a fantastic attacker for this deck, and Alolan Vulpix should not go overlooked. Alolan Vulpix is one of the best setup cards from this era, with its free beacon attack. It allows you to search your deck for up to two Pokemon, reveal them, and put them into your hand. Great not only for setting up Alolan Ninetales GX, but also setting up your Decidueye GX. And of course, the backbone of this deck is Decidueye GX with Force of Giant Plants. Decidueye GX can be evolved up on the first turn of the game. And different from the Volaplume version, this Alolan Ninetales GX version of the deck does not play any item lock, just focuses on getting as many Decidueye GX into play as possible. Often three or even four Decidueye GX with Alolan Ninetales GX means that damage counters are flying all over the board wherever you want to place them. It's a very challenging deck to play against and a super uphill matchup for Drampa GX Zorak. Let's get into the gameplay and see how it goes. Sam is going to be playing first, starts Espeon EX. Definitely excited to see that as Espeon EX is just an additional bench Pokemon that Sam's gonna have on his bench, powering up my Zorak's Mind Jack attack. Also, it's just worth two prizes. So a Pokemon used for its Miraculous Shine ability, which allow, or Miraculous Shine attack rather, uh, which allows it to devolve Pokemon in place. Since all my Pokemon are basically stage ones, except for Zorak Break, which is kind of like a weird stage two-ish if you think about it. Uh, the Miraculous Shine is not going to be as effective against my deck as it would be against some other decks. It just allows you to devolve the highest stage evolution from your opponent's side of the field, all of them, and put them all up to your opponent's hand. So it could be good against other stage two decks for just bringing those big stage two Pokemon up to the hand and leaving the smaller pre-evolutions behind, which can be sniped for a knockout. Now I start Pretty decent hand here. Love opening Drampa GX because it's got that big wheel GX attack, which I can use in order to get a gigantic hand and really get this game started. Now I'm looking to set up some Zeruas. I know that he has the ability to snipe down my Zeruas very uh, quickly. So I'm going to play this whole hand down, get as many Pokemon as I can in play. And it looks like I might be eyeing up the Turtonator GX with that Shell Trap. It was effective. And one of my earlier matches, able to two hit KO at Decidueye with the help of Choice Band and Professor Kakui. But instead, I decided to go for three Zeruas, a DC on the Drampa, and a big, big wheel GX. So a fantastic start here. And I want to try and get down as many Zeruas as I can on this first turn, since I know that Sam is going to be evolving up into Decidueye GXs, potentially finding an Alola Ninetales GX, and with just one Alola Ninetales GX and a double colorless, which we see that Sam just had to discard, as well as one Decidueye, he can snipe any Zerua for knockout. The 20 damage from the Decidueye GX in combination with the Ice Blade can deal 70 damage snipe anywhere on the board. He's already got a Decidueye GX into play, and I'm worried that he's gonna get that Ninetales for a turn one, or turn two, rather, knockout on one of my Pokemon. He's definitely off to the races now. Another Dartrix in play with the Force of Giant Plants. He is going to be able to instantly evolve up these Decidueye GX. And we can see he's already got two Decidueyes. If he gets one more Decidueye into play, 
this turn. He's just feather arrowing 60 damage anywhere on my board. And we can see how tough this matchup can be. If I don't get Zerua's out early, and if Sam is able to establish three Decidueye GX, it means that anytime I place a Zerua down, it's going to get instantly sniped. And now I see the Decidueye's Feather Arrow is starting to go on to the Drampa, and that keys me into the fact that Sam does not have it like that in his hand. And I get to keep my gigantic 10 card hand, which is fantastic. Now, it looks like I'm I end up knocking out the Sepion. I have the Team Magma secret base there. And even though Sam did not take the bait and uh, snipe any of my Zeruas, I am able to place damage counters on one of my bench Pokemon to power up Drampa GX's Berserker Berserk attack myself because of that Team Magma secret base that I already have in my hand. So I can place the base, put the Oranguru down. It'll deal two damage counters to the Oranguru there. And now Berserk with the Choice Band and the damage counters on Oranguru is actually enough to knock out that Espeon. Instead, I decided to go for the Vulpix just with a Lysander play. It's already got that double colorless energy on it. And with the knowledge that Sam has now two double colorless energy in the discard pile, I'm feeling pretty confident since there's no item lock in Sam's deck that I'm going to be able to take out this Espeon EX later. So the Espeon EX would have been an easy KO, but the Espeon EX is actually just dead weight on Sam's board. And if I take out the Espeon EX, I make it easier for Sam to maintain a smaller bench throughout the course of the game. So I decide to go for the Alolan Vulpix. And we see Sam giving me the frowny face. It's got the Tapu Koko promo with its flying flip attack. Makes it... Able to deal 20 damage to all of my Pokemon. A heads up play there from Sam. He knows that if he gets a double colorless energy, his third DCE onto that Tapu Koko, he can flying flip my board, use Decidueye's Feather Arrow to knock out Azarua and take a prize. But uh, he's already down two DCE. He discarded one earlier and I was able to target down and get rid of a second. He benches an Alolan Vulpix. Now with four bench Pokemon, Zorks are going to be dealing quite a bit with the Mind Jack. Now, it was a little bit of a risk for me going for that Lysander play last turn. If he had really gotten himself established, he could have started to take out my Zeruas here. And then, you know, that would have been pretty beneficial to him. Instead, I decided to be a little greedy, go for the energy, chase the energy on Sam's side of the field. And sure enough, I did not get punished for it. So it ended up being a heads, heads up call for me. He missed the double colorless energy. And I think that was a fair wager to make considering that he was already down one double colorless. So getting rid of the second one, hoping that he didn't find it again. And now I'm thinking, okay, now that I am knocking out this Espeon EX, I think it's probably time to do that. I don't want to give Sam a fresh hand, so I'm not going to end. I just want to dig for Zorix. And sure enough, I find one. Ideally, I would have found two or maybe even three Zorix in that Professor Sycamore hand. But one will have to do. I'm going to evolve up this Zerua here with the rainbow energy on it. And I know that next turn, Sam will more than likely be able to snipe down one of my Zeruas. But at that point... I will already be up three prizes. So I'm definitely sprinting ahead in the prize trade. And we can see how quick Drampa GX is. I mean, Drampa was able to just lead the way in this matchup, getting a turn one big wheel GX, a hand of 10. I had absolutely everything I needed in my hand at that point after the big wheel GX to take command of this match, go in with Drampa GX, start using Berserk for 180 damage with a choice ban and taking pointed knockouts on Sam's side of the field. So Drampa doing a great job of leading the way while I build up some bench Zorks on the bench to kind of just try to figure out my final three prizes after this Drampa goes down. So we see Sam retreating into the Decidueye. It would be devastating if he doesn't have the double colorless to knock out my Drampa GX after another Sycamore. And we see him attach the grass to his benched Decidueye GX showing he does not have the other double colorless, just trying to buy himself more time, feather arrowing, spreading more damage, and getting a DCE back from the discard pile with that Hollow Hunt GX attack. This is my time to shine. I've got a Zorak break. I've got plenty of energy and end so I can get those cards out of Sam's hand that he just hollow hunted for and mix up his hand again if I want to. And really, N is the only uh, good draw card that I have in my hand, so I'm probably going to be playing. And at this point, I'm just trying to get more energy down into play and trying to establish a second Drampa GX. Now, Lysander is a great card for me to have because it's going to allow me to take a knockout for game. 
uh, eventually. But the Decidueye GX with 240 hit points is just a big dude. And it's going to be very tough to knock out. Now, with the choice ban on the Decidueye GX, almost no decks in this format, we're playing Switch. So I know that Sam is going to have a hard time moving this Decidueye GX. It's just going to stay in the active position. I decided to attack with my Drampa GX. The Zorak Break can stand in with its stand-in ability and copy that Razor Leaf attack with its uh, Foul Play attack. So that is an option for me. But uh, it looks like finally Azrua is going to end up going down. Sam's targeting one down. Taking out the one with the Float Stone. That's a heads-up call there because it decreases the mobility that I have on my side of the field. And then I have to imagine he probably is gonna find the double colorless energy he needs, yep, to Razor Leaf this Trampa GX for knockout and another N to three, so my hand's gonna get disrupted again. But I do find a Versa Seeker and a double colorless energy, which is very good. And with Sam having three prizes left to my three, I'm about to go to one prize remaining. However, I am gonna have to chalk up that final prize somehow. And if Sam can continue the pressure by ending me to low, this is where this matchup starts to get a little bit hairy because uh, I do have to maybe either find Lysander for game after I take out this Decidueye GX, or I'm going to have to knock out another 240 hit point Decidueye GX, or maybe even an Alolan Ninetales GX. Now, I do have a way to one-hit KO an Alolan Ninetales GX. We see that uh, I've already been helped out a little bit by the fact that uh, these Vulpixes here on Sam's bench already have 20 damage on them from the Team Magma Secret Base, which has stuck almost the entire game. And it looks like I am maybe deciding to use my Versus Seeker here rather than just hold it. I do have the Instruct Oranguru uh, on my bench, which is great because even if I do get end to one, I'm just going to be able to use Instruct. And I think uh, looking at my discard pile, I decide that there is enough outs to uh, Versus Seeker left in my deck that I would actually be best off for me to just thin the deck as much as I can. And that's kind of what you see me doing now. Uh, mine up the amount of Pokemon in his discard pile here because I could use Oracorio's Supernatural Dance to checkmate him if he's got maybe four Pokemon in the discard pile. And I do see that there are enough Pokemon in the discard pile there that uh, that could be an option for me. I'm going to grab Tapu Lele GX out of the deck just to thin the deck as much as I can. And I think I might bench the Oracorio because its Supernatural Dance can get me a knockout on either of those Vulpixes with one, two, three, four, five Pokemon in the discard pile, it means that if he ends me and I'm able to find just an energy, I can use Oracorio's Supernatural Dance to place damage counters onto Vulpix or Rowlet for game. So I knock out the Decidueye GX, go to one prize remaining, Supernatural Dance does 10 damage, places 10 damage counters where, or 10, places a damage counter uh, wherever you want on your opponent's side of the field for each Pokemon they have in the discard pile. So with five, uh, plus three more, because I just knocked out a Decidueye, with eight Pokemon in that discard pile, it means I can place eight damage counters wherever I want on Sam's uh, side of the board for just one energy. And we see I'm checking the discard pile. I know that Oracorio is a guaranteed out for me, even if I get end of one. I'm anticipating the end of one here, but I do have the trusty Oranguru on my bench with 100 hit points still remaining, which is pretty solid. I'm not thinking that it's gonna be going down this turn as Sam wants to try and map out his final three prizes. And I've made that very difficult for him. Getting a Shaman EX here off of that end of one is pretty phenomenal as well because it's going to allow me to set up for six in search of that final Via Seeker or Lysander for a game. We see Ninetales GX coming into the active position and Sam is identifying the Oracorio as a threat. So he's going to Use the Feather Arrow ability and Ice Blade to take out the Oracorio since Oracorio is uh, a way to take game. And I just have Ice Blade. I just foul play Ice Blade. It doesn't matter. I can just snipe his bench using his own Ice Blade against him with Zorark Breaks Foul Play Attack. Sam is going to go first in game two. He forgets to put his Force of Giant Plants down here before he evolves. Since we pass pass on the first turns of the game, that is a mistake that's easy to make. But he's got the Force of Giant Plants, so it doesn't really matter. We pass pass so that we can play supporters on the first turn of the game, like this N here, which I am very thankful for. Since my hand, I would have had to use Professor Sycamore to get rid of a bunch of energy as well as some Versus Seekers. This hand is better. We've got a Zerua and a Tapu Lele GX I can use to go get myself an N or something like that. 
and just shuffle up and see some more cards. Now, Sam's getting off to an explosive start here. Turn one Decidueye with a Grass Energy on it. This is pressure right here. I mean, he's not allowed to attack on the first turn of the game going first, but he could certainly go in with the uh, Feather Arrow there and technically could have donked me. If you got three Decidueyes into play, use Feather Arrow three times. Could have uh, knocked me out. Now, I decide not to go for the Bridget here, turn one. And the reason being is that I already have two Zeruas in play. So I'm thinking about just going for an N, which feels really bad because Sam only has a hand of two. However, the Bridget also feels bad because I already have two Zeruas in play. So what am I going to bridge it for? Also, bridgeting without having an energy to attach feels really bad. So I'm very much hoping for an energy and a Drampa here. And I miss the Drampa. I've got the energy, don't have an Ultra Ball or anything like that. So I'm trying to figure out who is going to be the best target for the DC. And I think Tapu Lele GX is it. And that's something that's very interesting about this format is that Tapu Lele GX actually ends up getting a lot of airtime because of the fact that it's used as... Uh, one of the top consistency cards of the format, but also with its energy drive attack, it does some pretty good vanilla damage output, dealing 20 damage for each energy attached to both your active Pokemon and your opponent's active Pokemon. The damage on Tapu Lele GX can ramp up very quickly, and rather than miss a turn one energy attachment, I decided to put the double colorless onto the top Tapu Lele GX, because with Choice Spin, uh, that damage can really, really ramp up, and Tapu Lele GX easily helps uh, kind of finish off or set up two hit KOs with your Zork, uh, your Mind Jack Zorks here. Now, Sam is having the, the best game right now. I mean, he set up a Decidueye turn one going first. Now he's got three Decidueyes and a Shaman EX setting up, drawing more cards. I am certainly very scared at this point because he's going to be able to knock out a Zerua here without even attacking. And then if he's got a DCE in that hand, he can use Razor Leaf for 90 damage, 120 damage, if I put that Tapu Lele GX into the active. Sure enough, he's got the DCE, so he's taking two knockouts here, two prizes on turn two, knocking out two Zeruas. And you can see now why I said this matchup is not great for Zork. I got very lucky in game one that Sam kind of uh, stumbled setting up a little bit because this is how the matchup can really go. Sam taking two prizes, knocking out two Zeruas, and I decide not to bring back my other Zerua from the discard pile. You might have noticed I didn't use the Rescue Stretcher to bring my other Zerua back because at this point, every Zerua I place down is a free prize for Sam because Sam's got three Decidueyes out. So I'm trying to get bigger Pokemon on it on board right now i'm trying to get more gx's i want to get a drampa set up i maybe want to get a turtonator set up and i'm just going to discard this other zerua here to get myself a zork because i kind of want this thing to survive if at all possible now sam does have a filled bench so i'm going to stand in with this zorak here choice band and just mind jack for 190 damage and i'm thinking this is probably going to be the only zork i placed down this game the rest of the game i'm going to try and set up pokemon gx to the best of my ability but i already know i mean this game is getting out of hand very fast sam's going to take a knockout on my active zork i've got tapu lele gx whose hp is slowly well, not so slowly, quickly whittling away because of the Feather Arrows, three Feather Arrows, a Hex Maniac there too. Uh, just really tough for me, just in case my last card in hand was a Tapu Lele or something like that. Uh, the Hex Maniac could have just stuck me there. Fortunately, I do have a Professor Sycamore. And now that Sam has three prizes remaining, I don't want to bench any more little Pokemon that he could take out very easily with the Decidueye GXs. So I have a handful of Rescue Stretchers here and all of my Zeruas in the discard pile, but I'm not really intent on bringing those back because it's just a free prize for Sam. He's got three Decidueyes out, and there's pretty much nothing I can do about that at this point. So I'm looking at the map, trying to figure things out. We got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Uh, I don't need to do that much damage. I'm probably going to bench this other Tapu Lele and just put an energy onto it. I'm really missing Drampa. I wish I had a Drampa or something like that, but just because of the way that I've been drawing this game and how fast Sam has put the pressure onto, uh, onto my Pokemon. I mean, I've just been having to go with what I have, and what I have is Tapu Lele GXs. So we're trying to 
buy some time with that. We did take out the big scary Decidueye GX, which is good. Uh, he's got a DCE on his Alolan Vulpix, though. If he's able to find an Alolan Ninetales GX, that's certainly going to be very tough for me to play around because Sam has also not used his GX attack this game. So he can always use that Ice Path GX on the Alolan Ninetales. And Decidueye or, uh, and Tapu Lele GX does not have a good way to knock out an Alolan Ninetales GX. And sure enough, here's Alolan Ninetales. And Tapu Lele is going to have one heck of a time trying to fight through this thing. So I, I already know. The writing's on the wall at this point. Uh, it is very clear to me that Sam has this game under control. He's Lysandering up my other Tapu Lele just to make things harder for me. And then Ice Blade to put me at 150 damage. And now he's in a situation where if I swing in with my Tapu Lele GX, then I just power up his Ice Path GX to completely heal himself. And that's one of the toughest situations about this, uh, about this playing against this deck, right? Is he's got me in that situation where I'm just stuck. It's like I need to knock out the Alola Nine Tails GX, but I can't hit into the Alola Nine Tails GX. I also don't have a lot of great supporters available to me right now. Uh, you would think that since Sam is so far ahead, maybe I could end, but I actually cannot end because then I give him a three card hand and he's got a zero card hand. So I decided to have to Professor Sycamore instead and I attach the Rainbow Energy to my Tapu Lele GX. And I think I decide to potentially put the Team Magma base down as well. And with the Rainbow Energy on the Tapu Lele GX, I'm going to use a not often uh, utilized GX attack for the Drampazoric deck. I'm going to Tapu Cure GX just to try and buy myself a little bit more time in this match, feel out this matchup a little bit more and see if uh, maybe I can find some sort of route that was not apparent to me earlier in the match. Iron up that Tapu Cure GX, I get to heal all damage from two of my bench Pokemon. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna put this Drampa down as well. Um, maybe the Team Magma Base, Choice Band, just try to get some cards out of my hand. As I'm looking at my hand, my hand is not good. I may actually have to use Shaman EX to set up next turn. Um, but, uh, either way, I definitely am feeling stuck. So I'm hoping that maybe I Tapu Cure GX and then I can go up with Drampa and Righteous Edge and get rid of that double colorless. And maybe Sam with a zero card hand will not be able to get out of this small hand here. Sure enough, top text the third Destitui GX and is going to, uh, just evolve that on up and is going to be... Feather arrowing for 60 damage snipe again. So even though I got to completely heal that damage Tapu Lele GX on my bench, he's just going to get right back to where he was with another Ice Blade and Triple Feather Arrow. We can see how tough this deck can be to play against. At this point, I know he's got a zero card hand. I desperately need energy off the Shaman, but I've already discarded a lot of energy. But I need to find an energy and I need to Righteous Edge. Uh, and I'll probably Hex Maniac as well. So I'm going to Hex. He can't use Feather Arrow. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe I have a route, right? So I was just trying to buy more time so that maybe a route would present itself. It's possible here. Uh, if I'm able to knock out this Ninetales GX, right? If I find another energy in Berserk for knockout, then all I need is Lysander and I can bring up the Shaman EX. But he top decks Professor Sycamore. So at this point, he's going to be able to find probably the double colorless energy he needs to continue attacking. Field Blower to get rid of my tool cards. And uh, yeah, this, this match is looking like it is getting out of hand uh, very quickly. Finds the double colorless. But I had a route there. I did have a route. He had a zero card and if he didn't top deck Sycamore there, I certainly had a shot. Now I've got a hand that is going to be pretty tough for me to play out of. I do have Professor Sycamore, so it's still possible. If I find an energy and uh, maybe I could Berserk, I got a choice band and energy, I could Berserk the Ninetales for knockout, which is certainly very good. I have plenty of damage on my bench, but uh, yeah, and then all I need is that Lysander. So I actually have game next turn and set would be moving on. 3-0, I've got the DCE, the four energy berserk, not the berserk you wanted, but the one that uh, the one that you get. I'm dealing 180 damage here plus the 50. Going to be enough to knock out this Alolan Ninetales, and I just have to go for it and say, all right, Sam, you either got a three prize turn this turn. I know he's got a knockout on my Tapu Lele GX, but I've got game in hand. I can just bring up the Shaman 
and can take it. Does Sam have a way to respond here? He's got Supernatural Dance, and I look at my discard pile like, oh no. And sure enough, he's got Knockout, and I've got how many Pokemon in my discard pile? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Oranguru is going to be going down. So now he has checkmated me with the Supernatural Dance Oracorio, and we can see this card uh, doing a lot in these games. Now, I had Rescue Stretchers in the middle of the match. I decided not to play them. I didn't want to dilute my deck with more Pokemon. But sure enough, he's just got it there, and I concede. Uh, he's got the Supernatural Dance on my Shaman EX for Knockout, and we're going to Game 3. I'm going to be playing first in Game 3, and Sam starts with his Espeon EX again, which I'm really excited about because in Game 1, he started Espeon EX, and that went really well for me. So Game 2, he started with the Turn 1 Decidueye, and that went very poorly. So Game 3, we're hoping that maybe Sam... Uh, has some difficulty setting up. And I go immediately for Drampa. I know that if I'm going to end up winning this game three, and this matchup is very tough, uh, I'm going to need a Drampa GX using Berserk, hopefully on turn two for 180 damage. So I go straight for the Drampa. I can end here to get things started off as well. I might discard the Tapu Lele and that special charge just to aggressively get more Pokemon onto my bench. And I think that that's a smart decision here. The special charge is really kind of a just-in-case card. You don't really need it in a matchup like this where I'm going to be knocking out Pokemon GX for the most part. It's mostly for those matchups like uh, your Vespa Queen and things like that where you're going to be trading more non-GX for non-GX Pokemon. Now, I do find the DCE turn one on to Drampa GX, and I'm fine passing here. We've got a solid start with the Professor Sycamore in my hand as well, and I'm just hoping the same does not have the crazy setup here with multiple decision-wise on turn one. That'd be great. Having to end here without a Force of Giant Plants, I'm definitely stoked about that, and it's looking pretty promising for my uh, my opening turns here. Now, he goes for the Alolan Vulpix, might have to use Beacon, and he does not even have a Rowlet, so I am just loving the fact that he is getting off to a slower start this game. We saw last game where he got those quick decidueyes. I really got into deep water fast. My Zeruas, they have some time to survive here. And not only that, but I also have Versus Seeker. I can end those Rowlets right on out of his hand and go in with my Drampa. Now I've got a couple of different routes here of things I can do. The deck only plays two Floatstones. So the odds of me finding a Floatstone are pretty small. So I decide to just bench another Zerua. I could Hex in Big Wheel, which would be very good. I could also N in Big Wheel, uh, which is also pretty good for me. I can get damage onto my bench Zerua just by attaching that rainbow. So now I don't need to inflict damage onto myself with the Team Magma Seeker base. That rainbow energy will do it. And I'm thinking that we're just going to Hex here. So that guarantees me another turn of my Zerua is living. And I'm going to Big Wheel GX, giving myself the benefit of momentum here. I'm not really concerned if Sam places the two Rallets down. In fact, I want him to put the Rallets down because it's going to help amp up my Zorark's Mind Jack damage. But going for the Hex and the Big Wheel means I'm not going to take any residual damage from any potential incoming Feather Arrow Snipes or anything like that. And he can't use Tapu Lele GX. And he can't use Shaman. So he's able to instantly spring that Decidueye GX. Has an end, so he is going to disrupt my big wheel, which is unfortunate. The big wheel, you love it when it sticks, but it does not always happen that way. Still a great attack, though, because you force your opponent to respond to it if they can. They have to play the end. Now, Sam does have a pretty powerful setup here. He's able to get himself two more Dartrix and a Decidueye. So Sam's not out of this game by any means. Not able to Feather Arrow that turn because of the Hex Maniac, but he is setting up very well. So I'm in a new hand here. I've got damage on my bench there, Zerua. So I can start using Berserk for 180 damage with the Choice Band right now, which is exactly what I wanted. It's not a turn two Berserk. It's turn three, though, which is still pretty quick and a lot of pressure for this format. And I'm just looking at what my options are. I actually have Hex Knockout, which is really good. I can... Uh, Ultra Ball away, the Zorark break, potentially at Dark Energy, get myself another Zorark, and then, then Hex and Berserk for Knockout, taking all of his energy away from him. So I might decide to go for that. Uh, I could also just stick more of this hand. I don't necessarily want to end, and I think that Hex could be the play here since he's going to have all these Decidueyes, but nothing to do with them. 
Sure enough, I'm going for the Verse Seeker. It's Hex time, and we got another big Hex knockout. And being able to chain the Hex Maniac in this matchup is just game-breaking. We're seeing I'm taking a prize. I'm taking the lead. I've got uh, my evolutions are having time to get into play, right? Now that these Zorks are about to turn into Zorok Breaks, I just pulled a Zorok Break off of my prizes. Even though he's got three Decidueyes out, we saw last game he's sniping 60 damage a turn with three Decidueyes in play. Can't do it this turn because of the Hex Maniac, and I have another turn to be able to get Zorak Break into play. Zorak Break's got 140 hit points. is much tougher to take down than the Lowly Zerua. So I'm feeling confident. I've got the Drampa. I took out his DCE on the Alolan Vulpix as well which is a big deal. The double colorless energy are not the easiest to find, and he doesn't really have any attackers in his deck that do anything super proactive with the grass energy. If you just have grass and not a double colorless, then you're going in for Lahalo Hunt. That's pretty much it. Or you're passing with somebody like a Tapu Koko active, which we see here. And I top deck another Versus Seeker, which is completely nuts. I can just Hex Maniac again and take the Berserk Knockout. That was a crazy top deck. And I'm sure at this point, Sam is probably fed up. Like that is the third Hex Maniac, I think, that I have played this game. Back-to-back -back Versus Seeker, Berserk Knockouts. I only had a two card hand and we were still able to pull it off. So he's got these three Decidueyes just chilling still. Meanwhile, I've got a Zorak Break on my bench. Drampa untouched in the active position, berserking for 180 damage every single turn. He's got the double colorless for his Decidui GX, and it's gonna be able to go in with Razor Leaf, but only dealing 90 damage with Razor Leaf. Razor Leaf feels a lot better if you are able to supplement that with some Feather Arrows. Also, these untouched Zerua Zorks on my bench have gotta be pretty intimidating for Sam to be facing down at this point with zero prizes taken. He's finally getting some damage on the board with that Razor Leaf, I find Turtonator, and I've got the option to end or Sycamore. Definitely going to be looking at that Sycamore this turn to discard my hand and draw seven cards since I am up two prizes. Now, Turtonator GX could end up coming in clutch. I mean, he's got a lot of Decidueyes. Uh, the Turtonator GX can Shell Trap for 100 damage into a Decidueye with the help of a Choice Band. And I'm deciding, you know what, having big GXs in play is probably good. So I'm just going to do that. I evolve up my other Zorak. I am feeling great here. Rescue Stretcher, I've got a Zorak Break in my discard pile as well. Uh, I could get a second Zorak Break. And at this point, I've got no weak Pokemon on my side of the field. By the time Sam is finally going to be able to utilize that Feather Arrow, might be too little too late. Now, I might decide to just hold on to that Rescue Stretcher in case I want to go and use that Tapu Lele GX's Wonder Tag, having the Tapu Lele in my discard pile, means that Rescue Stretcher is just an out to a supporter, so I might not want to waste that since I don't think that my Zorak is actually in any danger. Now, I'm trying to assess, you know, what are the benefits of attaching the Dark here? Am I going to want to copy one of uh, Sam's attacks, or do I just want to stand in and maybe take this knockout? Uh, or, or just soften up this Decidueye with Mind Jack, since he does have a pretty full bench at this point. And I think going in with the Zorak Break is totally fine. 130 damage here. I get to keep that Drampa GX on my bench. And keeping the Drampa GX for a later date or a later, uh, a later turn is really powerful because Drampa GX just has that guaranteed one-hit knockout with a Choice Band on Pokemon like that Espeon EX, which Sam unfortunately started here in game three. So keeping the Drampa kind of in the hopper just for when I may want it is always a good idea. Now this game, I do not have that Orangaroo on my bench. So no sort of safety net for when I'm getting end to a lower and lower hand. However, the Rescue Stretchers in the deck still providing there with an out to a Tapu Lele GX. So I'm definitely liking that. And Sam's completely evolved up now. He's got a little Nine Tails GX, three Decidueyes, and he's finally going to start being able to take advantage of that Feather Arrow. Now, if he goes in and uh, just Feather Arrows the Drampa, knocks out the Drampa, that's fine. He kind of realizes that the Drampa is a major threat, and it's just going to Ice Blade and take that Drampa out of the equation, But which is fine with me because he leaves the Zorak Break completely untouched in the active position. Now, I did reference the fact that there is a way for me to one-hit KO on Alolan Ninetales GX. It's not easy, but if I were to piece together Professor Kakui, a Choice Band, and a Dark Energy, I can foul play and copy Blizzard Edge for 160 damage. With the Choice Band, that's 190 damage. With the Professor Kakui, that's the magic number, 210. Now, that play is not easy to put together, but it is a 
and out. So that does exist there. That Blizzard Edge base 160 damage can be ramped up with Professor Kukui and the Choice Band. Looks like I'm going to get a Pokemon out of my discard pile. Just sign up the other Zora break here. And since I do have that double colorless energy already attached to my active and I got the Lysander in hand, I think I'm just going to Rescue Stretcher for the Zorak break. I've got the Instruct Oranguru to kind of refill my hand and draw more cards. And I'm just going to bring up that Decidueye GX and Instruct for two. And I'm feeling pretty confident about this since I am going to be taking two more prizes by knocking out this Decidueye since I'm dealing 130 damage with Mind Jack again. So we're definitely feeling good about that. I've got the Professor Kukui in my hand. So, you know, dreams of knocking out that... Uh, Alola Ninetales GX with the foul play to copy Blizzard Edge. Not completely out of the question. Now, it looks like the Ninetales going to be bringing up my Turtonator. Kind of uh, just seeing, you know, Sam bringing up Turtonator with Lysander. Saying like, okay, Turtonator may be a Pokemon that I can hit for weakness and start to kind of expedite this prize trade a little bit. Uh, you know, Ice Blade just does more damage against her Nader. 100 damage, it's not bad. But obviously because of Zorak's stand-in uh, ability, I'm looking at this Kakui like, okay, I have game. If I find a Choice Band off this Kakui, sure enough, I do not. So that is tough. And I have to try and figure out, okay, what is going to be my best route to get around this Alola Ninetales? And I'm trying to figure it out. I know that with two prizes remaining, I cannot hit into the Alola Ninetales GX because then Sam will just ice, ice Path GX and completely move all those damage counters off. So I have to try and use Sam's Ice Blade against him. Ice Blade allows me to place 50 damage uh, on any of his Pokemon and I'm eyeing up that Espeon. So I'm looking at what is my Verse Seeker count? How many Lysanders do I have left? What are the odds that I draw into one? I'm also trying to assess the risk reward factor of benching this Zerua because if I bench the Zerua, then I'm gonna be able to evolve into Zorak next turn, potentially. And then I could potentially instruct to try and find that game-winning Lysander for the Espeon EX. So the problem is that I can't draw more cards because my hand is too big and it is also very bad. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do I draw more cards? How is it possible for me to thin this hand down to actually be able to instruct? Should I bench the Drampa? Should I bench the Zerua? Should I bench either of them? If I bench the Zerua, it actually gives Sam a pretty easy out to be able to win the game. All he's got to do is knock out the Zork and my Turtonator and the Zerua, right? So I'm like, probably benching the Zerua is too much of a risk. Now, if I just keep my bench uh, clear of any weak Pokemon, I make it still difficult for Sam to take his four prizes. He's got to knock out the Turtonator, the Zork, and then one of these big Pokemon, Oranguru, is the weakest with 120 HP. I'd much rather be there. Now, I could bench the Drampa, not really a point in that, because I could just bench it next turn, maybe if I find an Ultra Ball to be able to thin my hand or something like that. But I think I'm just going to foul play and copy that Ice Blade, soften up the Espeon. Now, with only three Pokemon on the bench, it's tough, because I want to knock out the Espeon. But the Drampa is not powered up right now. So I have to figure out a way to be able to deal enough damage. My Mind Jack is only dealing base 100, so I've done 50 damage to it now. So I need to top deck two cards. Like I essentially, I need to find myself a Choice Band and a Lysander in order to knock out that Espeon. So I am very much trying to grind my gear, you know, grinding the gears, trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to take these final prizes? Like I can't, you know, I can't hit into a Decidueye. And sure enough, Sam gives me a gift by ben by benching this Oracorio. Now, I know Sam is probably looking at my discard pile like, Oracorio won me game two. Maybe Oracorio can win me game three with some supernatural dance plays. But now I'm just a Versus Seeker away or a Lysander away from bringing up that Espeon. And now my math is fixed on that Espeon because previously I was only dealing 100 damage. So now all I need to do is top deck Versus Seeker and I can win the game. Or I can top deck Lysander and win the game. Or maybe Tapu Lele GX and I can win the game. It's got a Hex Maniac, so there's going to be no Instruct plays. I'm happy that I didn't bench that Zerua this last turn uh, because of the fact that he Hexed, so I wouldn't have even been able to Instruct. Sure enough, I top decked the Lysander, and Sam gave it to me by benching that Oracorio. I would have been just 20 damage short of game had he not benched that Oracorio. But uh, sure enough, we got it with the Lysander, bring up the Espeon EX, and that's game three. So we're taking the win with Drampa GX Zork. 
Great games to Sam. It was a pleasure playing against you. And that's round three of the 2017 North American International Championship Retro Format Tournament hosted by Pokestats. If you're interested in old format tournaments, make sure to check out the Pokestats Discord. I'll link it in the description below. Also, make sure to check out FullGripGames.com for all your trading card games, singles, supporting the shop directly sports the content that I create here on Tricky Gym. Also, if you're looking for PTCGO codes, make sure to check out FullGripCodes.com. I'll be uploading rounds four and five uh, of the tournament. It's a seven-round Swiss tournament, so I'll be uploading the rest of the rounds here of Swiss, and then there's Top Cut uh, here shortly. So make sure to stay tuned if you're enjoying the content. Uh, I'll be uploading the rest of the rounds here shortly. I've recorded them all, and they're all ready to go. I just need to commentate over them. So thank you all so much for watching the video. If you like the video, make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, and ring that bell so you get notifications on when I post videos. Also, make sure to check out the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Tricky Gym, where I stream live Pokemon trading card game content every weekday. We've got a great community over there, so definitely make sure to check that out and give the Twitch channel a follow as well. Y'all take it easy and have a great day. Peace!